In robotics, commanding our actuators with high precision is often a necessity. One such algorithm that allows us to accomplish this is the PID controller. PID control is a technique that uses our system's desired and measured states to give us the most appropriate command to send to our motor or other actuators. Error is a term that describes how close our system is to its desired state. We calculate error by subtracting the measured state from our desired state. With PID control, we aim to drive the state error to zero. PID is an acronym that stands for Proportional, Integral, Derivative. These are the three outputs that are combined and sent to our motor. When designing our PID controller and software, we will first define our three coefficients. These are weighting factors that affect the control well. Now we can create the function that we call periodically. This function takes in two parameters, the reference or target state and the measured state. We can then calculate our error from our system's desired reference state and its current measured state. We can then build a preliminary proportional or P controller from this error. Suppose we plot the state of our system where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is a system state. In that case, we can see that the state of our system will asymptotically converge to the set point. Still, it will never arrive precisely at the set point due to friction. We can add an integrator to combat this friction, making this a PI controller. This integral sums the total error over time and ensures that we arrive at zero steady state error. Lastly, we need to get rid of these oscillations to get an optimal response. To accomplish this, we can implement a derivative, or in this case, an approximation using a simple difference equation. The derivative factors in our rate of change and dampens our system's response. One important note is that we are approximating our derivative and integral calculations because these algorithms run in discrete time on a computer. Visually, you can see the integral of the signal approximated using our method. The example shown is a random sum. The total summed area of the blue rectangles is the approximation of our integral. As the time constant decreases, such as the act of removing delay from our algorithm, the integral sum becomes more and more accurate. Another technique is known as the trapezium rule calculation. This technique is a second-order approximation and generally has superior stability than the Raymond sum approach. Taking the difference between the current measurement and the previous measurement and dividing this difference by the time constant can approximate the derivative of a signal. Like with the discrete integral approximation, smaller time constants will result in more accurate approximations and as a result will have better stability. An important thing to understand is that improper tuning of your controller can lead to unstable oscillations within your system. To visually understand the idea of a feedback controller, of which a PID controller is one type of, it can be good to visualize it as a block diagram of the data flow. First, we generated the reference signal, which is the target state of our system. Then we subtract the measured state from the desired state. This calculation is our error. This error goes through our controller, which in this case is a PID controller. 
In this controller block, the error is multiplied, integrated, derived, and then summed together to get the desired command. Finally, this signal is sent to our plant, or the system we are trying to control. This could be something like a DC motor. After many iterations of this loop, your system will converge to the desired state.